Hi, this is JP from Nota Lights Over Arkham. The New Year's giveaway has ended and I got some good entries for the competition. The winners have been contacted and the prizes are going to be shipped from LCG tokens as soon as possible. But I wanted to thank everybody who participated in the giveaway and of course look at some of the decks that were submitted to the competition. So let's get started. So the first deck I wanted to talk about was one submitted by Matt Edelman. Uh, Matt is uh, known as Matastrophic on the Discord and he also has his own YouTube channel. So go check uh, his content out. He usually plays a lot with Lola. So if you're struggling to play with Lola, check his uh, tutorials on how to play Lola better out. But let's look at uh, the deck he submitted. It's a Janktastic in the Gnow Rex. The deck uh, revolves around in the Gnow, so you can run around uh, opening up locations and then uh, just barricade yourself somewhere and use in the know to pick up clues. Uh, I think the idea around this deck was to play it in the return to a Phantom of Truth on the Conviction route so that you uh, just stay alive and keep away from the organist running around and collecting clues as you go. So I for starters, really like the scenario that was suggested. I haven't played a lot with Rex. Uh, I have a small bias against Rex because he's so powerful that I usually just skip Rex when I'm picking up an investigator for a campaign. But I think this deck looks quite interesting as a true solo investigator. So I think I might give this and uh, suggest that uh, scenario a try. Next we have the Armor of Anderson, uh, submitted by Mark Matix. This deck uh, revolves around the Armor of Ardennes. And with it you can take a lot of uh, damage with uh, Leo. Uh, just run around with enemies on you, uh, taking uh, damage from the attacks of opportunity, then uh, dealing with the enemies with your survival knife in the enemy phase. And I, I really like this because the first time I saw the armor of Ardennes, I thought that it's a really high XP price uh, for an item that basically does nothing if you're doing your job right and killing the enemies before they can hit. But this uh, brings up another type to, to play that you don't kill the enemies, you just keep uh, running around, picking clues, uh, doing other stuff while the enemies try to beat through your armor and then you just uh, kill them in the enemy phase. Uh, so the deck Seems like quite a lot of fun, and I might also give this a try, but uh, the high amount of uh, XP used for this deck is, is a bit worrying because you're taking so many random basic weaknesses for a standalone, so uh, I'm a bit wary. I think the scenario suggested was Depths of Yoth, which is uh, an interesting scenario. I think uh, this deck could perform really well in that scenario, because you're getting a lot of enemies who hit only for one damage or so, so you could just keep on uh, searching for clues while those all of those snakes are on you, and then kill some of them off in the enemy phase. Next up... Uh, we have the 
decks that drag deck the unbound bound and this deck uh, revolves around using bind monster level 2 uh, i never have never used the bind monster so this qualifies really well for the binder fodder uh, card i also like dexter so uh, the idea of using Dexter's high willpower to uh, and bu bumping your willpower up with the four cups uh, and uh, Saint Hubert's key, for example, then just keeping enemies locked for the rest of the game uh, sounds really fun and interesting. The deck was submitted by. Simon Castle, and uh, well, he said in the message uh, that it's probably not a good deck, but still, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, it's the effort that counts. He submitted a good uh, rundown of, and description for the deck, and there's a lot of info on, on how you can utilize the Bind Monster really well. So I, I really like the effort he did for this deck. So that's why I uh, included it in my top 5 decks that were submitted. And I'm not sure if I'm going to try this out in a scenario. But still I wanted to mention the deck as it uses one of those cards that's never used by me or I haven't seen that card be used by anybody actually uh, next we have another Dexter deck and it's uh, Dexter and Henry in the university it's a 26 experience deck and it utilizes Henry 1 so uh, the idea of this deck is to load up the bag with Bless and Curse tokens so that you can figure off Henry One's ability more so when you reveal tokens you are less likely to hit the bad tokens that will stop the gamble the deck also you utilizes the protective incantations so you can lock out some of the bad tokens so the probability of hitting a token that will stop the gamble with Henry 1 is even smaller and I, I think this is a really interesting deck and uh, Henry 1 is definitely one of those binder for the cards that nobody uses and was doomed as bad from the start uh, people have also made some math equations uh, that how how <laughs> unlikely is to, is uh, getting any benefit from Henry One's ability on the probabilities of drawing those bad sign uh, bad symbol tokens from the chaos pack. So I added that also into my top five. And lastly, uh, we have the Cold West Pocket can work right by David Co. So. This deck utilizes the Cold West Pocket, uh, level 2. So, uh, Cold West Pocket is one of those cards that seems really decent. Uh, at least the level 0 version felt like it, it would could be work, working, but it, it just barely didn't work because uh, there is so few chances to use all of the 5 ammo on it. Uh, the level 2 eases a, a bit with the limitations of uh, getting the 5 ammo to use. This is because uh, with Tony Morgan you can play the Cold West Pocket down, then you can borrow time, then you have Leo and also ace in the hole and of course Tony Morgan's own ability to uh, put a bounty on an enemy to get an extra attack or 
engage action for the enemy. So there are a lot of uh, ways to... Oh yeah, and of course quick thinkings are also in the deck. So there are a lot of cards that add actions for you. So that you can get this uh, <laughs> Cold Fest pocket emptied. And maybe get enough use out of it before you have to discard it at the end of the round. Uh, this uh, also has the slate of hand in the deck build, so you can slate of hand it in, empty it, and uh, then get it back into your hand to do the same thing on the next next turn. So uh, I really liked also this finder for their card and the deck, and I. I'm really interested in maybe trying this deck out also. So those are the top five decks I selected from all of the entries. So I will add all of the deck lists in the video description. So if you're interested, you can check out all of the decks. Most of them have a pretty decent description. So you can read what was meant with the deck and how it should function. So if you're interested in trying them out, uh, I highly recommend doing so. It's a lot of fun trying out very janky decks and getting cards into play that you usually don't ever use. So that's that's the whole reason I, I wanted to make this competition, to uh, pick people's brains out to see how uh, which kind of decks were they uh, building for this uh, competition. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I again want to thank everybody for participating in the contest. And also I want to thank LCG Tokens for providing uh, the prizes and uh, support for this giveaway. So thanks a lot to them also. I will be doing maybe a couple of uh, playthroughs with some of these decks in the near future, hopefully, when I have the time. So look forward to those. Thanks for watching and have a great year 2021. Until next time.